So good morning, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday Morning Yoga Therapy. Today we are moving into the lower back. Uh, the pose I have in mind to move towards is this one, Parshvakanasana, which works with the hips and lower back. We're going to do lots of side bends today and back arches. Okay. We're also working with the third chakra. This is uh, called Mani Puraka, the seat of many jewels. And those jewels are all the organs. So we're going to twist around that next week. But this week, it's more about opening what we call the east of the body. So I'm facing east. We're opening that as opposed to stretching the west. We will also be doing that as a counter. Inhale, arms coming up by your sides, radiating like the sun. And exhale, down through the central channel, the Shoshona channel, all the way down the legs and feet. I bend the knees and I look at the feet. That's an add-on. Keep this going your own timing. Adding Ujjayi Pranayama, if you like. You do that with an open mouth to begin with always. If you have any vertigo issues, you might not want to look down. You might want to just look straight ahead. So that's what's going on, inner ear stuff. Just perhaps look straight ahead to help with balance. You can inhale into the chest, then into the belly. As we move into the spine more, <clears throat> excuse me, it's helpful to add this two-part breath. As you inhale, you're arching the spine. Feel that arch of the back. As you exhale, you're contracting the spine from the pelvic floor up. Stomach draws in, the chest falls. Inhale, chest to belly, arching the spine. Exhale, belly to chest, contracting. And one more. Let's bring the arms up to the front. Inhale, arms up front. Exhale, arms down in front. Just feel the difference in doing this in the back. You do it quite slowly, those arms coming up front and lowering. You might feel those deep spinal muscles, the multifidus muscles firing. If you want to experiment with that, you put one hand in that little groove inside the spine and just feel it contract. Actually, both directions, I find it contracts even more when I come down, which makes sense. Try that with both hands, just feeling those muscles, those stabilizing muscles of the spine, activating the arms moving up and down. Okay, so we're gonna do a lot of that movement today. Let's go up on the toes. And exhale, hands coming down by the sides. Just keep that going. I'm gonna turn my heat down, which I forgot to do. It is warm today. Now in contrast, can you do the same thing? Arms front. This should be much harder.
resist the going down. You'll really work your core from the pelvic floor all the way up the spine. That whole, the whole spine to the pelvic floor is actually your core stability, including your neck. At least that's one view. You can do this without going up on the toes if it's too much, of course. And then we're going to stay up at the top. If that's comfortable, keep it going. There's someone joining, so just keep that join going. And when you're ready, staying at the top. Exhale, coming to the sides. So you can come down on the heels whenever you like. Really sticking your hip out so that you're getting into the hips and lower back. If that's your focus, otherwise you can focus on the upper back if that's more your target. Let's put your mind on that place, that's a way of bringing bhavana into your practice. And some of you are lowering that lower arm. That's another lovely modification. You can bend the top arm as well as you do that, having differing effects on the upper back, neck and shoulders. It depends where your bhavana is. Maybe chanting a couple of sutras today. And one of them talks about bhavana, so I've really got that word in my head today, the mental attitude with which you do something. Which leads to an infusion process of that which you are focusing on. And then when you're ready, you're gonna stay on one side. So I'm going to do that at the wall and I'm going to cross my feet and I'm crossing opposite foot to arm, but you can do the same. You can see how that is different. You might like one more than the other. And I'm really sticking my hip out. You can do this in the center of the room as well. This can be also helpful for those of you with shoulder injuries. There's a number of you who have shoulder injuries. You can remember that. And I'm really sticking my hip out, that QL area, quadratus lumborum, all there. Very common place going to the other side tightness that causes problems in the lower back. And that can be from misalignment of the hips, can be scoliosis. So if you have concavity on one side, you might get more compression on that side and you just have to stretch it more. If you have scoliosis, you might find the other side you feel in the upper back if you have an S curve. So again, put your mind on the place of the spine that's going to be best for you, lower back, upper back. Bring in that bhavana, that focus, that attitude, that intention. And when you're ready, coming out. Just notice how you feel, hope that wasn't too much first thing in the morning. Let's just do a one side at four bends. So I invite you to do this with a chair or blocks if you prefer, or even the wall. So standing in Samastiti, you're gonna bring your left foot forward, turn your right foot out, and you can have blocks there ready. You can have a chair or even you can use the wall. 
Inhale, arms coming up straight ahead. You can modify arms to the side if that feels better for your shoulders. Exhale, coming forward. And again, you can modify bringing your arms behind if you've got neck, shoulder issues or hands down. So I'm focusing on the lower back, but you might want to focus on your upper back. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, coming down. You can bend that front knee to modify, to make it more stable. That back foot, you can turn out as little or as much as you like. Going up and down around four times. The end of the four times staying in the position again. You can start with some stitchy inhale, lifting the chest, arching the back, exhale, forward bend. Keep the lower back extending along the thigh as you come forward. And you might feel a, quite a bit of stretch in this right side of the lower back if that's a tight side for you, the length that's back. Notice how that is affecting your hip and lower back, especially the lower back. If you have tightness there, you will likely feel that. We're also stretching the front leg. So having tight hamstrings can really affect the position of the pelvis and can affect the lower back. If they're too tight, that has one effect. If they're too loose, another effect on the pelvis. We'll just stay in the pose if it's comfortable, otherwise come out. And in this position, you can do this with blocks or chair or fingertips. You're going to go to the little toe side of the foot and see if you can stretch that right side of the lower back by bringing your hands to the outside of your front foot. You can do that stitchy, inhale, lift, exhale, forward bend, or just stay. You can always use the blocks. It's actually quite nice with the blocks. I don't know if I've done this in a while. And when you're ready, gradually coming up, placing the hands on the thighs, and then coming up. If you don't have any balance or blood pressure issues, you can come up with arms overhead from the bottom and step back. Bring that right foot forward, left foot turned out. Inhale, arms coming up, front or sides. Exhale, extend nice and long as you contract from the pelvic floor up towards the belly button, that third chakra area. You bend the front knee, of course. Inhale, if you can, arms in line with the ears coming up. It's very strengthening for the back. Exhale, starting position. So you can just go up and down, but adding that starting position is a nice way to settle. In the later part of Krishnamacharya's work, he added that piece, which I quite like. When I'm pressed for time, I sometimes just go up and down. Doing around four, depends on your breath length. Now, if you want to make it harder, you can interlock the fingers as you move up and down. Next one, I'm going to stay in the position. Let's 
Stiti, inhale, lengthening the spine. Exhale, forward bend. You know, notice where you're feeling this. Are you feeling it in the front leg? Is that where your tightness is? Or are you feeling it in the back leg in the hip and lower back area? That's your tight area. It might be opposite on each side. One side you might feel your front leg, the other side you might feel your back leg and lower back. Just notice that. And when you're ready, you can go towards the little toe side of the foot. You can use the blocks or not. Chair, of course, wall. And I'm targeting this QL area lower back, hip. And I do spend quite a bit of time on that in the hip and lower back classes because it tends to be a cause of back spasms, misalignment in the hips. And maybe you're ready to stay either side or front. And then gradually coming up. With or without the arms, you can take this in two breaths. Stepping back, if that's comfortable. And just noticing how you feel. You might feel a little bit on one foot versus the other right now, because we just did one side at a time. So we're going to do a forward bend. Again, you can use blocks or chair. Inhale, arms coming up front. Chin in, if that's comfortable. Jalanda Bandha, exhale. Coming forward again, you can bring the arms side if this is too much weight for your lower back. If it's also too much, just bring your hands to a chair or a wall. Inhale, coming up, arms in front or sides. Exhale, starting position. Keep that going. I'm just going to show this with the wall for a minute. So if you have something like vertigo going on or your lower back does not feel like coming down very far, you could just work with a wall or the back of a chair and just go up and down like that and take that pause in between. And we're gonna do around six of these. You can always bend the knees at the bottom to make it harder. You can interlock the fingers. And harder still is skip that in between breath. And lengthen the breath. As soon as you lengthen the breath, it is much harder in terms of all the stabilizing muscles that have to work, the core activation. Especially coming up, you're resisting gravity. It's a lot of work. And then when you're ready, if it's comfortable staying in the pose, or you can just keep it moving. You can do some stiti, inhale, extend the spine, exhale, forward bend, use your blocks, chair, wall. wall look something like this you might not want to move your head too much down just bring it to neutral i might try this if i had vertigo cueing this one of us has that issue going on you might want to try that that could be good for concussion as well that kind of approach post-concussion syndrome Sustain. And 
any variation you want with your hands. And feel the stretch on the lower back. You might want to bend your knees. You might want to bring your rib cage forward on your thighs as well to stretch the lower back long and bend your knees. Feel how that lengthens your spine when you bend your knees. How that might decompress your spine as we age. The spine tends to compress. When you're ready, coming up. And two breaths, inhale halfway, exhale, stay. Inhale the rest of the way up. Doing that in two breaths just to help with blood pressure and heart rate regulation. It's a big change, head down versus head up. So as we age, our spine gets compressed just through gravity. So these four bends are extremely helpful for decompressing the spine throughout our entire life. Great for stenosis, if that's your issue, or degenerative disc disease. All right, so we're gonna move into our side bends. Start with Utita Trikonasana. Again, you could do this with a block. Try to remember to use some of these props I have. You could also use a chair. Okay, if you don't want to go down this far, you can bend the knee. And you can get rid of the arms. The arms are weights, so you can get rid of those as well. Inhale, arms coming up if that's comfortable for you. Exhale, imagine that wall behind you, or maybe you have one. And then finding your pose. Try to align those shoulders. So rather than collapsing that front shoulder and doing something like that, can you come higher up so your shoulders are perfectly aligned? And then go down from that place. Yes, much better. Inhale, coming up. You can always bend that knee you're moving towards. So um, if you have a knee that doesn't track very well, Mine on this side used to be a problem and it finally uh, did fix itself. I used to have to bend my knee to just get that integrity of the pose. So feel free to do that if you've got hypermobility. Inhale up, exhale down. You can always take that breath in between if you want to slow it down. I'm just going to go up and down. The idea of the block is you're bringing the floor up to you and that can be create a nice lock in the force, the forces at play, including energy. When you're ready, just staying in the pose. Now again, try to align those shoulders. So come up to a place. You might want to come up higher on the leg or have your hand on a chair so you can align those shoulders. Come up to roll that shoulder back. Roll it back there better and breathe there and bend that knee, that left knee. Your head, try not to dip it. I tend to do that. It's my weak neck. Try not to do that. And then when you're ready, coming up. There's a lot of alignment cues. Keep your feet parallel. We'll go to the other side. So many things you can focus on in yoga from energetics to alignment, from the gross level of the physical body to the pranic energetic level, the energetic body and then beyond. This top arm can also be down, okay? So you might do your pose like this. This is less pressure on the neck and shoulders with this back hand behind you on your lower back palm up or down. And if you want to take weight out of your back, use a prop to bring your hand to. So it's a lot of core work when you're just hanging out here without touching the leg or even touching the leg a little bit. It's a lot more work than using a prop. So you can take that pressure off by using some support. 
point up and down. Think about the energetics. And when you're ready, staying in the pose. I think we've done probably closer to six. Just breathing here again. Notice if you prefer to bring that top arm down. Give yourself permission to ease off. It's too much. It's not enough, then you just have no connection with the leg and just keep in alignment with your core. And also look down, I forgot to mention that, rather than front or up to the sky is classical. When you're ready, coming up, inhale, exhale. And that is really working on the sides of the hip and lower back on one side at a time. All right, so let's come back to the center. I'm just gonna do a small counter pose and then I'm gonna do a balance side to side. Inhale, arms coming up, side. And exhale, forward bend. I'm gonna add a little bit of Bhavana of Ishvara Pranidhan. We're moving towards a sutra today on Kriya Yoga, chapter 2 1 in the Yoga Sutras. Ishvara Pranidhan is, in the context of the yoga of action, is letting go of the results of our actions. So as we come forward, just want you to have an attitude of acceptance, letting go. You can say to yourself, I am letting go. If you like Sanskrit, Ishvara Pranidhan. You can just use that as your mantra. I'm going to chant that for you in case you'd like to add the Sanskrit. Ishvara Pranitana Dwa. Chapter One, Twenty Three. Ishwara Pranitana Dwa. say I am letting go if you want to use English Ishwara Pranitana Dwa. and one more coming up so hand center Come back to that later, no pun intended. And move into side movements again, this time with balance. Inhale, center, exhale. If you're having any balance issues, you can just come to here with your foot on the ground, okay? So you do not have to go further. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, coming to the side. So we're just working on, again, that hip stability. One side at a time, that hip stability is so important for lower back health. And we're moving into a full moon. So you might want to visualize beautiful Chandra in the sky. I work with the moon a lot because the moon is the deva or the god goddess of the mind and emotions the moon is so important also as an image of 
ogis or vitality. So I'm living in the forest right now and whenever it's full moon and there's no clouds, it is so bright at night. And that moonlight is nourishing my newly planted wildflowers. I got to garden last weekend, which was pretty cool <laughs> in February. That's the earliest I've ever gardened in my life. So that moonlight is nourishing those little tiny seeds at night. It's helping them to grow. So this ogis, it's very soft, nourishing light. The Ayurveda, this ogis is the outcome after 35 days of processing all your food of mind and body. 35 days later, you get the outcome. You get ogis or no ogis. So if you like, you can bring in that. Another way to strengthen the mind, just listening to this in the Bhagavad Gita the other day, is to contemplate, is understanding. I was like, oh, that's why we focus so much on philosophy and yoga. <laughs> We're trying to strengthen our minds through contemplation, just finishing up. So we're going to be contemplating Kriya Yoga today, the yoga of action. We're going to do some back arches before we move to our peak pose today, Parshvakanasana. And we're going to, this is going to be really going into that Kriya Yoga of action through empowerment. So I've been linking this idea of Kriya Yoga with empowerment. You're going to bring your left foot forward, your right foot turned out. In the Bhagavad Gita, this is called Karma Yoga. It's a very, very similar concept. How you act as a yogi. So the first thing about that action is you want lots of tapas, discipline, strength. Okay, I'll tell you what the pose is now. <laughs> so we're doing Virabhadrasana, sorry, into yoga philosophy. Virabhadrasana with our hands pulling back and making fists. If you can see that, but I'm actually making fists. You can't do it with just your hands like this, but I was taught with this, this action. And I'm going to use the wall in the exhale movement. For those of you with shoulder issues, you're going to love this. Some of you have it in your personal practice, I believe. Inhale, drawing back. So this is, according to Gary Krafsow, one of my mentors from 2001. Got to study with him for a month in Maui. He said this was the original Virapadrasana from Kerala, from the martial arts. So I know one of you is a martial artist. This might be a little bit familiar to you. This exhale movement, I'm adding the wall. I'm bringing the toes towards the nose as I exhale. Stretch the upper back, neck, and shoulders. And then inhale is opening the east of the body. Purvatana. Purvatana there. That's the accent on the right place. Purvatana, the, creating that fullness in the front body. Switching sides. These kinds of poses, these warrior poses are used for courage, developing courage, strength. Ability to face a challenge and not collapse in the face of it. Third chakra, empowerment. If 
Find that heat, that tapas. And just finishing up after you've done six to eight. Just step back from at the wall. If you're not, you can just do any four bend of your choice. I'm doing it at the wall. And inhale, look up. Exhale, bend your knees, so look down. This is upper back and lower back. Inhale, looking up, upper back. Exhale, bend the knees, lower back. My hands are about a quarter of the way down, but you could go to half way down if you prefer. Version of the wall. I find really good for boundary setting, working with boundaries. If you're feeling like you can't say no, that can be really helpful. I'm gonna do regular warrior now. So left foot forward, right foot back. And this is a bigger stride now, if comfortable. Inhale, arms coming up front, if it's comfortable, otherwise sides and palms together, holding after inhale. One, two, Three, exhale, release. Do this in your own timing. You might hold less. If it's causing pressure in your head, skip the, the, the hold, okay? For vertigo, might not be a good idea to do that hold, just skip it. One, two, three, exhale. So the hold can be the same length as your inhale or half the length or some other ratio. I want you to think about the word, first word of Kriya Yoga. You need self-discipline, tapas, fire. Fire in your belly, that's the third chakra. With that fire in the belly, you need to have that focus, that determination. It can also just be a word used for facing a challenge facing a challenge. You're opening the front body. One more time. Purvatana. Uvatana. All right, stepping back, we're going to do the other side. So hold after inhale, same length as your inhale or half your speed. Adjust the arms side if that feels better on your shoulders, any height. You can move up to the sides if that feels better. Lower back focus, arms front. This is Working those multifidus muscles, strengthening the spine. Now, if this is compressing your back, I forgot to mention, you might want to do it here instead. So to show a couple of those, this is for decompressing the spine. If you've got a lot of compression when you come up here, try at a different angle. It's also very strengthening. Think of that word tapas. What does discipline mean to you? Self-discipline. Facing a challenge. Your attitude when you face a challenge. Tapas, what's that? Doing six to eight, we're doing quite a bit of this one. Empowerment.
And when you're ready, finish them off. Okay, if you need to do a forward bend now, if you're comfortable, we're gonna go right into Parshva Konasana, which starts with warrior two, but feel free to do a forward bend first if your back demands it. Okay, if you just have an injury or something, I would recommend that forward bend first. So turning your left foot to the side, your right foot can be square or angled in, slightly bending that front knee over the ankle towards your second toes. Feeling that stretch in the hips. This is a konasana, that hip movement, parshva side hip movement. It's more the Sanskrit actually of the pose. Inhale, the arms coming up. Exhale, we're gonna start with that warrior two position and then slide right into side angle. Inhale, extend the arm long. This breaking up these two parts of the pose happened later in Krishnacharya's work. Exhale, hand to the sky. Inhale, warrior two, and you could look at the front fingers, middle finger if you like. Exhale, release. Just keep this going your own timing. Inhale, arms coming up. Exhale, bending the knee over the ankle approximately, coming down. Hand can be on top of the thigh or inside or outside the thigh. You could use blocks to come to if you have more flexibility. Line those shoulders. Inhale, arm coming along the ear. Lengthen now, feel that stretch in that QL area again. Exhale. Inhale, coming up, maybe doing a warrior two for a moment. And exhale, release. All right, do two more in your own timing, then we're gonna stay in the fourth one. At the end of your second one, or your fourth. Just stay in this pose. This pose is used for the lower back, for the hips. Now in the position, you can just stay here if that feels good for neck and shoulders. And bend the elbow, look down. Inhale, look front. So if you want to add that, you can. Or you can move in and out of the pose. Staying here is not working for you. Do four of these. Feel that big stretch in the front hip. Coming out of it, exhale, hand to the sky. Inhale, coming up. And release, okay. It's pretty intense pose. All right, inhale, arms coming up. Exhale, through your warrior two, aligning those shoulders. Inhale, extend the angle. Exhale, hand to the sky. Inhale, through your warrior two, perhaps looking at your right middle finger and exhale, release. Keep this going three more times on your end, on your own at the end of the third time, just stay if it's comfortable or keep it moving. Just notice the effect on the right hip. 
and the left lower back. And next one I'm going to stay in, and you can keep it moving. You can always get rid of the arms as well if it's too much. You can get rid of that back arm. Not to mention that. Okay, if it's too much weight on the neck and shoulders, get rid of that back arm as we stay. You can just stay here. If it's comfortable, you're in your stay position. Exhale, bend the elbow, look down. Inhale, look front or up. This is neck and shoulders, but also you can focus on the lower back as you extend nice and long that stretch on that left side of your lower back. Your hand could be on a block, front or back, or on the floor, some of you. Yeah, that's right. I like to open my hip with my front arm. And after doing around four of these, we're going to come up. Exhale, hand to the sky. Inhale through your warrior two. Exhale, hands down, feet parallel. Let's do a forward bend from here. Let's just change the position of the feet because that could be a little hard on those feet. You can do Prasari Tapada Uttanasana if you like, wide foot of four bend or just Uttanasana. Inhale, arms coming up. And we're going to do that Ishwara Pranidhan. Ishwara Pranadhanani. And I'm adding Kriya Yoga, it seems like. Kriya Yoga. We're moving in that direction. Sorry about that. Just slip that in. Ishwara Pranidhanani Kriya Yoga. You can just say Ishwara if you like. Ishwara. Surrendering to the inner teacher, surrendering to what is, surrendering to the highest. Accepting what is. Ishwara. Ishwara Pranidana Dwa. Surrender to the highest. Just going to chant Ishwara. Ishwara. English, I am letting go. Ishwara. forward. We might go right to child's pose from here or stay a little bit longer if that feels good. I'm decompressing your spine. You've got one side of your back a little tighter than the other. You can play with bringing one heel back. Notice the effect of that. You're ready, moving into your child's pose. In this position, you can just stay there. You can go on your back if this is not comfortable for your knees, okay? You can lie on your back instead. 
knees to chest. And bring your arms to one side. And feel how that gets into your lower back. One side at a time. Just notice one side might be tighter than the other. Really try to stick the hip out as you do that. When you feel ready, just come into a seated position of your choice. And if you're not comfortable, you can lie down if you prefer, okay? If you feel like you need to lie down, feel free to do that. So I want to bring in this sutra on Kriya Yoga. Yoga of right action. So as I chant this, I just want you to observe the rise and fall of your breath. If you want, you can add a, an affirmation as you breathe. It might be more about that aspect of action that is that fire in your belly, that tapas. Inhale, am, exhale, strong. It might be more about letting go. Inhale, let, exhale, go, Ishvara Pranidham. And Swadhyaya, we haven't talked about that, but that's what we're doing right now, Swadhyaya. Meditating on the self, that's really what it means. Being with yourself, contemplating. Deciding on the best course of action. Doing it with lots of tapas, lots of discipline, and then letting go of the results, accepting what is. Tapaha Swatyaya Ishwara Pranidana Nikriya Yoga 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 Tapaha Swatyaya Ishwara Pranidana 
any action into yoga. You're facing a challenge, you're facing a situation. Tapas, think about what you want to do, swadhyaya, contemplate, best course of action. And back to that tapas, do that action with much discipline, focus, give it everything you've got. And then Ishvara Pranidhan, let go of the fruits of the action. Let go. Shan, the 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 Namaste. Namaskaram.